Okay, good morning class. So today we're looking at uh, exponential and log functions. We're looking at the example <coughs> for, page, uh, for um, exercise 6. And exercise 6 is on page... On page 57. On page 57. However, the example is on page 57 as well. Okay. So today we're looking at log graphs and inequalities. Okay? Log graphs and inequalities. So log inequalities are better than log laws, but you can solve inequalities using graphs. Okay. So let's look at the first one. Example one. Use the graphs along. Uh, use the graph alongside to answer the following question. Okay, did I cut the graph? No. Okay, I'm just gonna cut the graph quickly. I'm just gonna pause the video again at this point. Otherwise, it's gonna cost me to draw these graphs. Okay. All right, we're back. So let's look at um, the, the graphs on the side. In number one, we are told that you got log x base. 2, so let's look at number 1, let's go with purple, we're going to answer this, because there's a lot of colors already on the board. So number 1, we got log x base 2 must be less than or equal to 3. Okay. So what we do is, we look at, we know this is like a y, not so, so in other words, where is y less than or equal to 3? Okay, can you see that people? So, if I draw the graph y is equal to 3, then it will look something like that. At 3, that is y is equal to 3. All of you with that. Now, if you relate like that graph to this graph that was provided to us, firstly, this is an increasing exponential as a log function. How do we know that? Because its inverse is 2 to the x. Can you see that? So, that graph has to be Oh, it's the name of oh the graph. This is given to us. I was going to work out which one of the two it is. Okay. But we see it's increasing, so the log function is also increasing, so it's that one. Okay. But anyway, it was given to us on the, on the graph. Okay. So what we do is, okay, we, we draw the graph y is equal to 3. There is this line here. Not so. So what does this mean? The graph must be less than and equal to 3. The graph must be less than and equal to 3. So is it above this graph or be, uh, above that line that I draw in there or below the line? It has to be below the line. Not so. So it's from this point up until all the way down to infinity. Can you see that people? So where is it from? It's from an x value of 0 until the x value of we don't know what this x value is. Not so. So in other words, x has to be greater than 0, but it has to be less than this x value here. Okay. And we must talk about the, you see it's less than and equal, and later on more than and equal to. That I'll discuss once I've calculated the value of x. Okay. You'll see it will come with an equal sign. And we'll discuss that now. How am I going to calculate the q value? How am I going to calculate the skew value? Um, yes, good start. You yes, you're going to substitute. You've got an x, an unknown x, and a y of 3 into the log x base 2 graph. y is equal to log x base 2. Because the point of contact or the point that the graph is going to be. It's x and a y. So we say 3 is equal to log x base 2. So how are you going to solve for x here? Um, yes? That thing is what you call that. You're going to convert it to exponential form. So what would it be? 3x equal to? x is equal to? 
two cube. And two cube is? Eight. Eight. So that, that point is actually? Eight. You see that, people? Are you all okay with that? So let's write inequality. X must be greater than zero, but less than eight. Can you see that, people? Well, what are they talking about? They're talking about the fact that it is equal as one. Is the graph equal to zero at any point? No. So I can't put equal to zero then. Why? Because it is an asymptote thing. The graph will never cut that, uh, that, that asymptote. Okay, we'll never ever touch it. It comes really close. That's what the asymptote is. The graph comes really close, but doesn't touch the, that graph. Okay. Let's look at eight. It can the graph be equal at eight? Yes. Why? Because at x is equal to eight, you've got the y value of three. So it's including eight. You guys understand? Okay. I will explain that three times now, okay? We don't get it after this three times, and I respect this, okay? Let's look at number two. Okay. In number two, we are given log x base half must be less than and equal to negative three. So what do you notice here? Now the other one, the other graph. Log x base half is this graph here. <coughs> okay. Log x base half. Yes. So if you, if you must draw the line, the graph, y is equal to minus 3, we will be drawing that graph here. Not so. You all agree with that? Yes. There is the inequality. The inequality says, that the y or the graph must be less than or equal to minus 3. So is that above the graph, that I, the straight line, the horizontal line I've drawn? Is it going to be above or below? Yeah. Below. So it's this part of the graph here. You will agree with that? Yes? No, this is not to do with the drawing. You're asking, must we draw only that point? This is to do with the reading from the graph. So you have your graph sorted out already. Your graph is drawn and given to you. Now we must just draw, uh, we must just answer it from the graph. So when I wrote that inequality, which I will be doing now, that is the answer they're looking for. What I'm highlighting here is I'm explaining to you what that actually means. Okay. So people, what do we need here? We need to know what the R value is, not so. Why? Because X must be more than that R value. X R value. You guys understand? Right. So how do you calculate the R value? How do you calculate the R value? Okay. Yes. This is so. How do you calculate the R value? You're going to substitute R, which is an X, and what's your Y value on this line? Negative 3. Not so. So you're going to substitute X and negative 3 into Y is equal to log X by R. Okay. Remembering again that that's an X and a Y here. X and a Y. Okay. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. So what do I do now? Negative 3 is equal to log x by solve. So how do I solve for x here? Change. So x is equal to half raised to the exponent. Negative 3, which is what? again can you see that which also confirms that this is a reflection in the x-axis because that is 8 and the minus 3 now 
If something is reflected in the x-axis, what happens? Y becomes negative. That's a, that's a reflected point of Q. Can you see that? Q was 3 and my, and, um, 8 and 3, whilst R is 8 and minus 3. So how would I answer this question? I would say, with the, with the, with the inequality would be, X is greater than 8. Can it be equal at 8? Yes. Why? Because at 8 it's equal to negative a third. And a negative three thirds. So x has to be greater or equal to 8. Okay. Any questions with regards to this one here? No? Let's look at number 3. Here we are asked with log x base 2 greater or equal to minus 3. So if I must draw the y is equal to minus 3 graph, that is the graph there that we drew. Not so it's on the... Oh, it's name already. Okay? However, that is the y is equal to minus 3 and the log x base 2 graph is that one here. What's wrong? Okay, so we are then interested in this point P here, a T. Can you see that? We are interested in this point T there. But the question is where is log x base 2, the log graph, greater or equal to minus 3? So do we look above minus 3 or below minus 3? Above. So it's this part of the graph we are interested in. Can you see that people? So which point do I need? I need that point T. Do you all understand? So let's then answer it. We will then substitute point T, which is X, and what is your Y value? Negative 3. You're going to substitute that into, into Y is equal to log X base 2. It's the X and the Y. So negative 3 is equal to log X. Uh, base 2. So how do I solve for x here? Change it again. So that's going to be x is equal to 2 to the minus 3. And 2 to the minus 3 is 1 over 8. So what's the coordinates of t? t is going to be 1 over 8 and negative 3. But remember, is that part of the graph we're interested in? So we have to say x must be X must be in that direction is in the more than and the less than direction. More than. So X must be more than or equal to 1 over 8. Okay? Does it say? Okay, I hope so. A definite question in the exam, eh? Yes? Sorry? Because she's asking what makes it different for the one that has a zero in it. It is because if you look at we are shaded. We're shaded from the in that direction. So I'm not going to the zero direction. Yeah, where it's going to. So it's going away from the zero. So I'm not going In the next one you'll see the zero come up again. Okay. And if it's not the uh, if you don't understand, just let me know again, okay? The full lesson will be found in the description box below, as well as um, the revision exercise this topic three. It's quite a bit of sums I've done out of that exercise as well. Okay. People number four. Yeah, we're asking for you for log x base a half. That's greater or equal to three. Log x base a half must be greater or equal to three. So log x base a half, of course, is this graph. The y is equal to 3 graph, is that graph there? So now it says, where is the log graph? Where is the log graph? More than 0. So is that above or below the graph? Above. Can you see that? So in other words, is this part of the graph you are interested in now? Can you see that? 
So it's actually between 0 and this x, s value. And what is the coordinates? I don't need to work out the coordinates of s because I know that s is the reflection of t in the x-axis. Now t we know it's going to be 1 over 8 and minus 3. So what's the coordinates of s? What's the coordinates of s? 1 over 8 and 3. So it's a reflection in your x-axis. What happens if something is reflected in the x-axis? Y becomes negative. Okay. So as I explained, it's between 0 and this S value. Okay. And uh, the S value, of course, that X is going to be 1 over 8. So X has to be greater than 0, but less than an 8. Okay. <coughs> now coming back to the equal sign. Can it be equal at the 0? No, why not? Asymptote. Can it be equal at the, at the 1 over 8? Yes. So the graph is equal to the other. Okay. So with that, you should be able to do exercise 6, which brings us to the end of this chapter. Okay. Now you've done the functions for the year. So now everything else should be just revision on functions. Okay. Again, you will find the full lessons in the description box below as well as quite a bit of sums dealing with the division exercise this topic.